Hi, this is Molly from the Palo Alto Junior Museum and Zoo, and I thought we could do a little scavenger hunt where I walk around my neighborhood in Palo Alto and see how many cool plants and possibly animals um, I can find. And then you guys walk around your neighborhoods, which probably look pretty similar, and see if you can find some of the same things I did. I'm starting my walk at Gunn High School, so we'll see what they have. Ooh, what are these trees behind me? So our first yellow flower is sour grass. And these guys are cool because they actually curl up at night. Kind of like this one that's not in direct sunlight. And then when they're in the sun, they open up and they have five beautiful petals. Um, and if you chew on them, the stem, they have this sour taste. So if I take a bite, Chew on it like gum, spit it out. Ooh, that's sour, man. Um, make sure that you don't eat anything without washing it, because if you find um, sour grass, it could have been peed on by a dog or could have pesticides on it or something yucko bucko, and you never want to eat anything without making sure that you 100% correctly identified it. But when I was a kid, I loved chewing on these, even though they're so sour. Our first purple flower is called periwinkle and it's actually growing right next to some sour grass. So our first yellow flower is sour grass. Um, its leaves almost look like a clover, but it's not a clover. And then cute little periwinkle, which also have one, two, three, four, five petals. Our second purple flower is also periwinkle in color, but it's not called periwinkle. This is ceanothus. So we have this nice purplish blue flowers, but sometimes they can also be almost white in color as well. So if you see any of them bushes or trees with the white flowers, it's still ceanothus. It's another color it comes in. So these are dandelions. The yellow flowers look like a sunburst. Um, and if I want to go down to the very bottom of this tall plant and look at the leaves. Now, a lot of animals, like our tortoises at the zoo, love eating dandelion leaves, dandelion greens. So, we make lots of salads with dandelion greens. It's one of the staples of our Palo Alto Junior Museum and zoo diets. The zoo diets, they love dandelion leaves. After the dandelion flower has been pollinated by an animal, it seeds and it looks like this. And a way you can help disperse those seeds is to make a wish and blow on them. And all the seeds go flying in the wind and they plant another dandelion flower, hopefully. Leaves of three, let it be, we found some poison oak. Sometimes poison oak leaves can look a lot um, like blackberry leaves. So if it's hairy, it's a berry which means that if it has thorns, it is a berry. This doesn't have any thorns. It doesn't need thorns, because if you touch it, you will break out in a horrible, horrible rash. Um, so it doesn't need anything pokey. It is just poisonous. But right behind it on this log are some teeny tiny mushrooms. That's a living fungus. I'm not gonna get close to try to figure out what kind, because I don't want to touch the poison oak. Oh, that's regular oak. That's valley oak. This is poison oak. Leaves of three, let it be. <laughs> Not even. I was so hoping I would find this. Growing on a vine with thorns and ants crawling on it. Even the undersides of the leaves are pokey pokey when I feel them. Big old thorns. This is blackberry. Touch, touch, touch. Touch, touch, touch. Won't break out. Not poison oak tried to make me think you were poison oak, but you're not. All these bugs are crawling on it. It has all these thorns because it grows delicious, delicious berries. And look, even the leaves are getting eaten and it doesn't want to be eaten. So it has these thorns to protect itself. Um, but yeah, this is blackberry. Look, there's a little caterpillar trying to eat these blackberry leaves. Tasty, tasty, thorny, thorny, leaves of three, but not poison oak. Magnificent. I have side-by-side -side oak trees, which is really hard to tell right now but let me zoom in up close. So we're gonna start with my favorite type of oak tree, which is Coast Live Oak. And you can actually see some flowers on it, which is really, really cool. 
these little red guys. Um, Coast Live Oak has these sharp, shiny leaves. So pretty hard to the touch. Um, the underside is not shiny, but the top's really shiny. They're pokey, they hurt to walk on, and they have these very, very gnarly trunks and these big branches that grow out. I, when I see a Coast Live Oak, it just reminds me of the California foothills around the Bay Area. Um, Los Altos foothills, Palo Alto foothills, it's just like, bam. You see so many Coast Live Oaks, they look very rounded on the top. Now, right next to it, we have another type of oak tree, which also makes acorns. These would both make acorns, and this is a valley oak. They have much, much softer leaves, and they are they have lobes, so they're very lobular. You'll see, instead of that rounded leaf shape, you'll see these different lobes, and a hairy, hairy caterpillar. Very, very cute, will turn into a beautiful moth. Those hairs are to make the inside of a predator's mouth itchy, so if a bird tries to eat it, that's a very, very itchy snack, even though it's a very, very beautiful hairy caterpillar. Also, gnarly oak limbs and trunk, but this is a valley with those soft lobe leaves, and this is a coast live oak with those hard, shiny, pokey leaves. So I found another valley oak, you can tell because of those lobular leaves. Um, growing right underneath it is, oh, I'm sorry, this is a valley oak. I hope I said that. Valley. Growing right underneath it is a coast live oak. Um, it looks lobular, but actually someone's just taken bites out of these, but these are hard, pokey, and shiny. Um, but this isn't actually connected to the valley oak. It's just growing. It's a young sapling growing right underneath it. But what I really want to show you is growing on the valley oak, there's this orange stuff. It's a type of lichen. So another living organism, this orange lichen growing on a valley oak, which has teeny tiny caterpillars on it. Look at the little caterpillar. It's so cute. Our next purple flower is lupin. This one's very, very pale, almost white, but they come in much darker purples. And you can see these flowers grow in this circular pattern up the stalk, the stem of the flower, um, of the plant. And lupin means wolf. And even without this flower, I can always tell lupin by its very unique leaf shape. Again, growing in a circle with these long leaves on top individual leaves growing together and teacher Mikey and I were walking through this park right after it rained and when it rains these leaves are actually tilted up a little bit and they collect the water and it all runs down gravity pulls it down right to the middle where it makes a dew drop because of surface tension that water holds together in the middle of the leaf in a perfect droplet that looked like gemstones it looked like um, a fairy or a gnome had gone around and put a glistening gemstone in the middle of every single leaf. And teacher Mikey just thought it was so, 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 so beautiful. Um, but it was actually water droplets collecting. And right now, it's the time of the year for the pollinators to come to these flowers. And I see a lot of bumblebees flying around. And let's see how close I can get without disturbing them. Our bumblebees, a lot of our bumblebees are native. And these bumblebees have orange clumps on the back of their legs. That's actually pollen that they've collected. So they're going around pollinating the flowers, making them fertile so that they can plant fertile seeds and more lupin plants. This is a ground squirrel. You're probably used to seeing a lot of tree squirrels in our, your yard, um, which live in nests and trees. But this guy actually lives in a burrow underground in a hole. And a lot of times you'll see them sitting or standing straight up looking for predators who want to eat them but this guy looks like he's just foraging along the path in the shade. So this guy's upright but it's actually to get food to munch on. Let's bring his hand to his face, munch 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 and they are herbivores so they're eating plants. Eucalyptus tree in bloom with these beautiful pink flowers. Um, eucalyptus 
have a lot of oil in their bark and they're highly, highly flammable and extremely invasive. But there's so many in this area and I grew up seeing them that I think of them as such a staple of California and the Bay Area, even though they're not supposed to be here at all. The leaves are cool to the touch if you touch them. And if you ever go horseback riding, a lot of people um, will pick off a bunch of leaves and put them on their saddle to cool down their butts while they're riding. You see some of the seeds growing. How cute is that? And they smell amazing. So if you rub, 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 rub and sniff, they just smell beautiful. And in the background, we have our donkeys, our bullpark donkeys. So Perry's a little boy. And um, when DreamWorks was making the animated film Shrek, they actually came here and drew the character Donkey based off of Perry's movements and body types. And then the face is mostly the acting of Eddie Murphy. They tried to incorporate a combination of our little Perry Donkey and Eddie Murphy. But those are the beautiful donks. There's a eucalyptus tree dropping its old bark. So right now the trunk looks so smooth. If I look on the ground, there are these curls of bark from the eucalyptus. These are fuzzy caterpillar cocoons, and thankfully, a fuzzy caterpillar is right next to them demonstrating. Um, but each one of these guys is a different little cocoon that the caterpillar wove, and then a moth emerged from and is going around, hopefully pollinating. But of course, our little caterpillar friend is a leaf eater and muncher, so not very helpful at helping the flowers grow. So more cocoons and a little red mite, eight-legged arachnid. Sorry, I'm having trouble holding the camera still because he's so high up and so small, but that is a mite. So a honeybee favorite is clover. So these little pink and white flowers are clover. Um, and we often focus on their leaves. Usually their leaves are in lobes of three, one, two, three but sometimes you'll see a fourth leaf and that's a four leaf clover. So I mentioned that our sour grass had very similar leaves, but don't mix it up. This is true clover. These flowers that grow very close to the ground and often have honeybees pollinating them. And those are our clover flowers. This is amazing. Biggest tree in the world, tallest. Tallest trees in the whole wide world grow here in California. See the color of that bark? These are redwoods, so they have this reddish tint to them. Look how high they go. Incredible, incredible. Huge, 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 ancient. Can be hundreds, thousands of years old, these trees. Um, tiny seeds, so we're gonna look on the ground, see if it dropped a seed. Can we find one? They look like teeny tiny pine cones. Oh, here's one. So from this big, big tree, dropped a little seed. Now not every seed that drops becomes another tree, but sometimes one of these drops and gets planted in the ground and a new tree will grow. And here are some sprouts coming up. Now these sprouts won't become trees because they're growing too close to this guy. This plant is a vine. Now normally we don't think of plants as moving because they are rooted in the ground and they can't pull up their roots and walk around like we can, but plants do move. They grow up and vines are very cool because they send out these little curlies. And what they do is they send them around and around and around in a circle. Now they're moving right now, but it's so, so slow, we can't actually see it. But they're looking for somewhere to hit and grab onto. Now this is a dead part of that same vine, but we can see right up here that this curly cue hit part of this fencing and it wrapped around and it's going to pull the whole plant up and it's going to grow up 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 this fencing by sending these little curly cues moving out along and that is how vines grow looking at two types of lichen so i already pointed out the orange stuff but this green stuff grows a little longer and hairier um let's see if i can see it hangs off like that also lichen. Do not mix up lichen and moss. This is moss. It's fuzzy the way it grows. 
lichen was those orange and really pale green things growing on plants. Um, but lichen and moss both grow on other things. So this moss is growing on a rock, uh, but it is not a lichen, it's a moss. This beautiful tree with the leaves that look like stars because they have five points is amber. And you'll see the seed balls starting to grow and eventually they'll fall to the ground as spiky balls. There's tons of them down here. And all these holes are where the seeds have fallen out of. So the tree grows this and drops it to the ground and it holds lots of seeds in it. And right next to it, is a redwood seed, so there must be, haha, -ha, some redwoods right over here nearby. Um, these, I think, are the most beautiful leaves in the fall. They change to yellows and reds and oranges and gorgeous, gorgeous shades. Of course, those red and yellow pigments are currently in the leaf, but there is so much chlorophyll, so much green pigment right now that you can't see it. It's hidden under all this green. But as the leaves die in the fall, those green uh, chlorophyll, chloroplast cells will break down and it will reveal the reds and yellows hiding underneath. This is a pea plant and oh my gosh, we have quite the pollinator uh, coming to check it out, big ol' bee. And it has these beautiful purple flowers that almost kind of look like snapdragons with the mouth, but they can come in lots of different colors, pinks and whites as well. They are a vine, so remember I said vines grow by curly cubes coming out. And the peas are very young, they're not ready to be harvested, but there are some peas, seeds inside, but we like to eat these seeds, these seed pods, and they actually come out of the flower. So a pollinator goes, fertilizes the seed, the female part inside this flower with pollen, the male part of the flower, and then a pea plant will start to grow with fertile seeds ready to be planted as a new plant. So beautiful, and here it is. I was waiting for this guy to land. Oh, wow. Cool, thank you pollinators. This is an amazing find. Growing on this log, we have a mushroom. Mushrooms are funguses like molds, they're alive, but they're not a plant or an animal. This is an amazing find because we usually see mushrooms come up the day after the rain, but because this mushroom lives on a log, it's more hardy. So even though it's really a nice warm sunny day and it hasn't rained in a while, um, we still see these mushrooms. And I wanna figure out what type of mushrooms these are. I'm actually gonna break a chunk off and look underneath. Oh, this is a turkey tail. Do you see these spores? Those are the holes. It kind of looks like a sponge. Sorry, I'm just gonna see if I can knock some powder off on my leg. I, I wasn't able to, but um, these pores have spores that come out of them and those are the equivalent. Think of it as like the seeds of the mushroom. So all these little holes have these little things that fall out. Uh, there's something called false turkey tail that looks like this, but smooth underneath that grows. So no, no holes. You wouldn't see those holes, but it would look just like this, but very, very smooth. I hate the name false turkey tail because it is a real mushroom. There's nothing false about it. It just people think they find turkey tails and realize it's not the mushroom, the turkey tail. Um, and we have a scientific name that makes it legitimate and real, but we don't have a common colloquial name. So common names are just the names people use the most to talk about these beautiful plants. Well, this is not a plant. This is a fungus, excuse me. Um, but a common name is what you would call a dog. And then the scientific name would be uh, Canis familiaris, right? So scientists have real names, but we don't have a good common name for false turkey tail. So I want you guys to think of what we could call false turkey tail other than false turkey tail. These of course are called turkey tails because they look like the big tail of a male turkey trying to attract a female turkey to be his mate and make babies with him. All right, I'm here at my last um, destination. So I went to Gunn High School. I walked to Bull Park and now I'm walking to Esther Clark's Park, um, which is right by my house as well. So 
everything I find today is in walking distance. Um, it's all happened in the same day. I didn't need a bike. I didn't need a car. I'm just walking around and seeing what I can find. So I'm going to see if I can find a couple more things to point out to you guys in this park and then I'll walk home and then you guys can let me know if you find any of the things that are in my neighborhood. This lizard is doing push-ups because I'm in his territory and that's how he shows me how strong he is and that I should go away because he is not prey. He's not food and he does little push-ups. Um, but what a cute little reptile basking in the sun to get warm. Hi buddy. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for a fourth yellow flower chamomile. This is what you make tea out of. Chamomile tea, nice and relaxing. Um, it grows really close to the bottom of the pathway also very hardy so it grows, grows close to the ground but you'll see it in the path where people trample on a lot um, if you walk on it too much it will die but it doesn't die quite as easily as other plants you would tra trample on so you can see this path is really clear where people have walked and the plant that's growing closest to the pathway is chamomile so way to go buddy this is such a special flower this beautiful orange flower is a California poppy. It is our state flower. So of course our state bird is the California quail. Our state reptile is the desert tortoise and the desert tortoise at the zoo is called Arizona because animals don't really care about these borders that we arbitrarily draw between their deserts. So you can find desert tortoises in California and Arizona but they are our state reptile and our state rock is serpentine and this beauty right here is California poppy. Um, lots and lots of bumblebees right now going around pollinating these flowers. I can hear them buzzing a little bit. They close up as, at night just like um, our sour grass does. They close up in the dark, but it's a sunny day, so they're open, ready for those bees to pollinate. Going around. Here's another little pollinator in a flower. Thank you, thank you, pollinators, for keeping our amazing California poppies growing and in bloom year after year. One of my favorite yellow flowers, mustard. So the mustard you eat is made from the seeds of this beautiful yellow plant. At the zoo, our animals love to eat the leaves. We make a lot of salads for our tortoises and other herbivores out of these big old mustard leaves. And I mentioned that they like to eat dandelion leaves as well. So for whatever reason, these yellow flower plants have yummy, yummy, scrumptious salad leaves for our zoo animals. Um, the seeds are a little spicy, but I like eating the flowers. This flower looks pretty good to me. Mm. Oh my god. Yeah. That's good stuff. Don't do this at home. Don't just eat plants that you find growing and pick them. Only teacher Molly does that. Because it's dangerous. And you don't know who peed on this. And you might not know if it's mustard or not. But it's delicious. So these guys have lots of little flowers that grow in this dome and the seeds are in the middle. And Oh, there's a bug. I see a lot of honeybees pollinating these guys right now. So I saw bumblebees um, in our California poppies, but here we see honeybees in our mustard. So growing at the base of this eucalyptus, wow, it's a big old eucalyptus are these flowers that I see growing at the beach all the time. And usually when I think of our San Francisco Bay Area coastline, California coastline beaches, I often think of these flowers. Turns out they're highly invasive. They've outcompeted our native beach plants. And even though they're a plant and you think their root system would hold our dunes down, because they're killing and outcompeting, really outcompeting all of our native plants, it actually causes beach erosion. They're not very good at holding in the sand, not like the plants that are supposed to be here, our natives. Um, and it causes our shorelines to get washed away and uh, sand crumbling. 
it basically increases beach erosion which is very sad because I, I love these plants because I grew up seeing them at the beach uh, but they're not supposed to be here even though they have lovely lovely flowers a lot of people have these in their yard igneous volcanic rocks made from volcanoes um, when molten lava under the earth gets really really hot it bubbles and releases gases and uh, that magma shoots up out of the earth's crust as lava and it cools down and if it cools down quickly a lot of that gas that air gets trapped in bubble form and that's how you see all these holes in this rock this is probably a piece of pumice because it has lots of holes and air trapped in it and a lot of people put these volcano rocks in their yards who can find the most caterpillars can you count and see how many you can find and let me know i also saw a lot of pollinators so remember pollinators are bees butterflies hummingbirds moths bats hopefully i got everybody um wasps yellow jackets hornets are not pollinators uh, even though they do look like bees so how many pollinators can you find in your neighborhood uh, let me know and we'll see who finds the most thanks guys